friends. Good night, everyone. Good evening. I mean, I'm gonna look at you. That was quick. Um, it is less nerve wracking to talk to 10,000 people on Facebook than it is talking to 130 eyes or 260 eyeballs. Um, but for anyone who doesn't know us, we're Sarah and Otis Frizzell from The Lucky Taco. If for anyone who doesn't know who or what that is, it is a taco truck that we park up at the end of Ponsonby Road, 230 Ponsonby Road, right here in Auckland, Friday through the Sunday, serving up delicious tacos and traditional Mexican drinks. The truck is the heart and soul of the business, the baby, the test center, the personality, and the opportunity to be face to face with our customers on a daily basis. And the business started with the truck, and we started the conversation about the truck online on Facebook 18 months before we even had, sorry guys, an operational business. So yeah, people bought into our dream. They helped us build it. They were on the journey with us, all thanks to social media. That platform enables you to broadcast your story to the world and for the people to join you on that journey if they want to. It was only on our honeymoon in LA in 2012, surrounded by creative eateries on wheels serving up delicious, fresh, spicy, affordable food, that the penny dropped. That was it. We could bring a piece of that tasty, creative funk back here to NZ. We worked really hard to save and earn some money, and then we went on a research trip to Mexico to learn how to cook some of the more complex dishes and the food that we'd not really heard about. We needed to go and learn from the pros. And we learned, we, we learned so much there, it was incredible, mind-blowing. And as you can tell, we're not Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> really? Left <laughs> hand. <laughs> I'm a Jew. <laughs> Jewish and Liverpoolian and crazy taco mix. Um, so to earn the respect of our fellow Mexican homies, we had to do things properly. So we ate a lot of tacos. Then we came home. And so, in May 2013, the Lucky Taco was born. I've left out all the bits where we cried lots and had to remortgage our house to keep going, but as we do in real life and on social media, we tend to paint the best pictures of ourselves. And, but when we went to Mexico, she, before we left, she started the Lucky Taco Facebook page, and I was like, maybe, hey, sure, it's sort of like, we've got nothing to show them. Uh, but she was, uh, with the advertising history, she was sort of born into the world of social media and w advertising was intrinsically sort of woven into that. And I was like, hey, Facebook, this Facebook thing needs photos. Did, you know, and she was like, well, we'll take photos while we're in Mexico. And it's like, of course, we can give them actual footage of us growing. We talked about it. We said we were going to do it. And I just, every other Mexican food joint in Auckland, it's Mexican specialities. And it's like... We're gonna do it, we're gonna do it. And it comes to a point, and we've said it publicly on Facebook. Um, so for me, I, um, I grew up in broadcasting. So um, radio was sort of the closest version of that. It's funny, I was just talking before, because sometimes on radio, you're talking to the masses, like you would on Facebook. Um, and someone, and I remember when they got the first text machine at, at BFM, so people could um, real time critique you. And people would be like, wow, great show. You guys are awesome. And some would be like, hey, you guys suck. You're not funny. You should go home. And it's like, but you didn't have to. No one knew about that. I would just like delete and don't have to talk about that. But I like, oh, um, currently, if you've got a big audience, people can diss you in real time and everyone can read it. Yeah, so I'm, I'm a lecturer at Colab, which is a creative technologies co-laboratory, and I teach transmedia storytelling. So my job basically involves a lot of things that sound made up. <laughs> um, so uh, the short story with Transmedia Red is basically um, producing content and telling stories across multiple platforms in a way that seems coherent and meaningful and allows people to participate. And so social media is a really important element of that. Pretty much everything I do involves um, social media in, in one way or another. And it means that I have a lot of social media accounts. And so <laughs> my relationship with, with social media is complicated. <laughs> and, um, and it's something I, I sometimes find myself feeling a little bit conflicted about because sometimes I don't know who I am or who I'm talking to. And 
I think a lot of us can probably identify with with that. Um, how do you how do you know how to maintain a, a, an authentic voice when when you're, you're operating on so many channels and talking to people you don't really know? Um, but these are things that we all have to kind of, of navigate and find a way to be comfortable with social media. So. I would not say that I am a social media expert, but I'm, I'm somebody who's thinking a lot about how we can um, comfortably incorporate social media into our lives that doesn't involve um, compromising our, ourselves. I can remember 80% of our customers' names on our first face and they're like, wow, how do you know my name? I'm like, I don't know. And now I feel like it's a mental challenge where like, I'm like, oh, I remember you, I remember you. And if I get the name wrong, it's really upsetting. But I, honestly, most, not all 10,000 people, but on social media, we do have a genuine relationship with everyone. And I think people just genuinely want to engage. And I do. And I, Anna, you were saying before about multiple yous online on all these different channels. And I think that sometimes. But and we were talking about how they're all different. I mean, we only use Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. That's the only three that we really utilize. Pinterest. Pinterest as well, yeah. Um, but they're all different. I think Facebook for us, I feel like, is more formal, a place to tell more of a story. Instagram's way more personal. It's like, look, we've made a giant hot dog sandcastle on the beach, but you wouldn't, I wouldn't put that on Facebook because not everyone wants to see that. But it can, Instagram is more you as a person and your business, maybe. Yeah. Facebook's kind of more formal, I think. And then Twitter is instantaneous, either a direct link to a bigger story, or for us it's great because we're a mobile food truck. And it's like, OK, we're open now, guys. Here's today's menu. We're selling out of pork, come quick, type thing. So they're all different. Let's talk about the dark side of social media. So what I want to ask our speakers is, you know, obviously there's great things that we have with the internet and social media. However, we are opening ourselves to fraudulent behavior and loss of barriers. You know, I, yeah, but as we've said before and earlier, this is social media just gives everybody, and that's everybody, whatever it is, mm -hmm. it just gives everybody that chance to broadcast themselves. And that's, that, that's you're going to get the good, the bad, and the ugly. I don't know how to combat the bad. All right. Anna? <laughs> 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 the academic version. <laughs> huh. <laughs> Um, yeah, I wish I wish I had an answer to that. I mean, social media is really difficult to regulate, um, and 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 it's the the thing about all forms of um, social media, including things like YouTube, is that the wonderful thing is that it means anybody can have a voice, yeah. and the terrible thing is that anybody can have a voice. It's um. Can I just this almost segue into a yeah. into a Facebook story and anecdote? I've got to tell you all. <laughs> Years ago, and uh, when MySpace was withering and dying, um, I don't know. <laughs> there was a there was a there was a place called MySpace, and it it, it, it preempted Facebook. Um, um, I dabbled in MySpace, but I never really I never really engaged. I found it a bit tricky to find my way around, being slightly old and and not au fait with it all. Um, but then I remember somebody saying, oh, there's this new version of MySpace called Facebook. It's far better. It's probably going to be far more, you know, it's going to be cooler. You can do photos and you can poke people and stuff. So uh, um, I, I did, I, I went on yeah, a graffiti wall. Yes, that was one of the big things for me. But um, so I, I went to Facebook and um, I built up this, this sort of base of friends. And, and I got a message one day. From a young woman and it said why don't you accept my friend request and i was um i messaged her back and said well i don't know you and she was like do you know all your friends on facebook and i said well i don't actually but um i just sort of picked them randomly i said and she was like well can you accept mine please i was like no <laughs> um and then i got another and then i got another message from her the next day saying can you please accept my friend request and i was like ah. Oh, this is a bit weird. I don't wish to accept your friend request. <laughs> and then the next day, she was like, "Who the hell do you think you are, you big yeah. star? You, you know, you, you think you can just piss all over me?" And I was like, "Hey, oh, hey, I don't know you or anything. This is just weird." And 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 then I started getting more and more messages. So I was like getting like I guess like cyberbullied or stalked. I don't even know what it is. But I it was really every time I turned on my computer, I had all these messages from this girl. By then, I didn't want to accept her friend request because she was a, like. 
psycho. And, um, and I didn't know what to do. I was like, the friend, the not friend, defriend. Um, so I shut down my Facebook account, just all because of her. I was like, I don't even want to be on this weird place. So I, I cancelled it and I was off Facebook for like a year just because I was like, I don't want to be in a place where people can hassle me like that. I'm just, I don't need the drama, man. But a year later, or well, a couple of years later, I got back on a Facebook and read she, fortunately she hasn't tracked me down again. But, um, but now I'm sort of, I was, for a while I was just more selective and just keeping it with my friends and stuff like that. And it was sort of um, until I learned how to use it. I mean, that was a very weird experience because I've never really been bullied in real life, but I've been hassled by a, an anonymous girl. I think with social media we have to remember that it's, it's really a very new phenomenon. Like, um, we, we all kind of have our training wheels on when it comes to social media and we kind of have to develop some, some norms and some kind of etiquette. Not just young people, but, but all of us, but young people are vulnerable. There's a, there's a theory of, um, a sociological theory about identity um, that is based on dramaturgy and performance. And this idea that we have a backstage and a, and a front stage. Um, and in, in our, on our front stage, we kind of have a self that we perform um, and we've rehearsed that self in, in our backstage space. And it's really important that we have a backstage where we, we can re rehearse that self. And for young people, the challenge that they have now growing up in social media is there's no backstage. Um, they don't have a really clear sense, of, I think, often of those boundaries between public and private. And so, um, not just for young people, but all of us, I think we have to develop a greater awareness of those boundaries between public and private and enforce them. I've noticed on lots of my sort of friends and other friend circles on Facebook and Instagram that it sort of weirds me out because I've got friends who have kids, right? And they post pictures of their unborn children in utero on Facebook. And then continue to catalogue their lives, so their entire lives, <laughs> on Facebook. Oh, look how cute you are in the bath! I mean, like, that kind of stuff, all on Facebook. My question is, it's not your identity to be sharing, so why are you doing it? So, I don't want to be too judgy about this one, because I think we're just all a little bit naive. Um, yeah. I'm interested to know how many of us have used the How Old Robot? Yeah. yeah. Put, okay. put your hands up if you used it. That's about well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, How was that, Jose? <laughs> and then what the rest that? of you are in just in denial. <laughs> I know you did. Um, so so a, a bunch of people in this room and all over the world have put their name into a search engine uh, and went through a fun process of seeing how old they appear to look and then helped a process of tagging their face and contributing to a database of information about themselves. Who owns your place? And we are doing this all the time and we don't think about it. There, there is another, you know, there's like, which Star Wars character are you? And it's like, answer 20 questions put your name on it and share it on Facebook to all your friends. But all of a sudden, there's you've answered like a couple of hundred questions about yourself, what you like, what you like doing, where you go, what sort of personality trait you think you are, and stuff like that. So instantly, those all those people, there's a big database. It's like, Going back to the baby thing though, I kind of disagree because I think you share things, you share what you love. And if you're a parent, you love your kids, and we all like seeing cute babies. I mean, that's like, yeah, you know, and I. So but do you start a Facebook no, page I, for them, or do you just no, put it on your no, Facebook no, no, page? No, 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 it's not starting a Facebook page. They're like a bowl page. of lasagna. It's like, it's like look, look, look at it. Don't. It's like first steps, or like I've yeah. just given birth to this. You know, that's beautiful stuff. That's beautiful content that you want to share. I think it's up to the individual themselves to edit how much they share. Who thinks it's okay to share and catalogue somebody else's life under their identity? And the a minor. Yeah. A minor, a minor, a minor. Who thinks that's okay? You just pretend that they don't exist. <laughs> 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 it's really, really, really like, like, there's no right or wrong answer here. What I'm trying to define is. It's just a limit. The, the whole, I mean, the answer to this whole talk and the whole debate is just about self editing and limit and just, and a, and a level of how much you do it, isn't it? Be aware. We've got lots of kids with friends. 
<laughs> We've got we, lots of friends with kids. Well, we actually, <laughs> we actually get, because we get lots of kids to the truck, and then I see them, and they'll, they'll tag photo and something like that, and they're maybe like, I don't know, 11, 12, but they've got like super mad skills on them, like, whoa, she's good. Yeah, I'm reposting that. It's a great photo. You know, and they're, they're, they're little kids, and then I, I wonder whether, and I think maybe they allowed on Instagram, but not Facebook. Mm. It's interesting. I, that's actually really interesting when people people often send us photographs of their kids wearing because we did lucky onesies, the little baby stretching grows with the with the skull on, and they set people send them in quite often. Or there's little kids eating the kitty quesadillas, and it's like oh Ruby eating her first. Sorry to say Ruby, it's the first thing that came into my head. <laughs> um, oh look, Ruby's enjoying her first, and I'm like, is it okay? Is it, do you mind if we share? And I always ask. I would never ever repost someone's someone's child without asking their permission first. And I think, again, that's what we're all talking about today, is it's coming back to just awareness. It's like social common sense. Yeah. I mean, I think we, we all enter into some kind of contract, like with Facebook, for example, we um, agree that we will give up certain aspects of our, our privacy um, or information about ourselves for using a service that a lot of us get a lot of enjoyment out of and can be very convenient and, and enhance our lives in lots of ways. We just have to be conscious that that is a contract and it's a business contract. We could go on forever and ever and ever, this is a very interesting topic. However, we're going to wrap it up there. I just want everyone to put their hands together for the amazing Sarah Owens.